special edition of ICT KNCCI uh, Diary and uh, we are going to talk about uh, supply chain and logistics and I'm joined here by a gentleman by the name Felix Chege. So Felix, thank you for joining the show. Thank you. And just tell the viewers who is Felix and what does Felix do? Uh, okay, uh, Felix is a young entrepreneur mm -hmm. in the Kenyan space, uh, trying to guarantee entrepreneurs I call them manufacturers or suppliers, that they can venture out of this market space or uh, guarantee manufacturers mm -hmm. uh, that they can have access to a different market space across the continent without the hassle of customs, cleaning and forwarding, and logistical work being taken care mm -hmm. of by RSA. Okay. Yeah. And uh, as a young entrepreneur, Felix, uh, mm -hmm. uh, some of the challenges that you face in, in the supply chain and logistics space, uh, what are these challenges and how did you maneuver to be where you are right now with RSA Africa Marketplace? Um, as an entrepreneur in this, uh, the Kenyan space, mm -hmm. uh, the main challenge is uh, actually information. Mm -hmm. um, as, as, a young, as, as a young entrepreneurs, we tend not to uh, take time uh, to research, uh, take time to ask, uh, take time to learn. Mm -hmm. At the same time as entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs in this space, uh, we don't have access to capital. Capital to start a business. Mm -hmm. uh, capital to run the business. And, ca and mainly capital is not about, it's not mainly about the money. Uh, sometimes, yeah, I know capital is a bit, money is a bit important mm -hmm. as, you know, capital is a feature in capital. But uh, I mean resource in terms of uh, the mindset, resource in terms of information, resource uh, in form of uh, the kind of network you have, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, more importantly, uh, the funds to set up a business. Uh, so, uh, in my venture or in my, you know, road to uh, mm -hmm. starting RSA, my main challenge was uh, one capital was a main challenge mm -hmm. because uh, back then trying to set up a logistics company it means you have to set up the infrastructure itself uh, to. Uh, have a logistics company up and running and the infrastructure I mean uh, the trucks themselves uh, you have to have drivers you have to invest in software to run the trucks you have to invest in uh, you know there's a lot uh, in place uh, but at the same time there was uh, the information itself and uh, what was I really selling mm -hmm. was I really selling a logistics company or was I selling uh, you know something more than a logistics company uh, at the same time, uh, the competition was also there, mm -hmm. uh, the players in the industry. So there was that trying to identify a niche in the market or trying to identify what makes you different from any other player in the mm -hmm. market. So uh, those are some of the challenges I, I had when starting up. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, challenges are there to make us learn. Challenges are there to give us um, a chance to write a script about uh, our own lives or our own experiences. Mm -hmm. So um, challenges being there, I'd say, it's a learning curve. It's been a learning curve all through the process. Yes. And um, I really appreciate uh, you know, uh, the whole journey. It's been a journey, but um, I'd say I really appreciate it. All right. Just like you <coughs> said, uh, one of the challenges you say it's uh, uh, information and uh, research. Mm -hmm. Young entrepreneurs in, uh, in Kenya today, they see as you see Felix is doing good, but you want to be where Felix is, but you don't know the journey where Felix what where he has come from and where he has reached and where he is going now the vision what would you advise like someone who wants to venture in the same space as you what would you advise that person to to do and uh, what kind of market information is there in the space of supply chain and logistics uh, for me it's a a bold word and call it uh, discipline mm -hmm. You know, no matter the space you're in, be it logistics, be it uh, marketing, uh, be it trading as a space, mm -hmm. uh, I'd say discipline makes an entrepreneur. And uh, by discipline, I mean the consistency of uh, uh, your task or your daily activities. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as young people, sometimes we tend to uh, have these brilliant ideas. But sometimes having to effect the ideas requires a bit of discipline or backing by you know uh, our own characters, uh, the persistent, uh, the persistence in uh, uh, trying to push your dream, uh, you know, uh, the patience itself. Because as you maybe mentioned, that uh, maybe young people see Felix and uh, not only Felix, or see young guys trying to make it, and you rush, you know, thinking that everything is all rosy. Uh, I'll be very honest with you; it, it's been a really, really. Uh, 
tough journey mm -hmm. along the process. And uh, by tough, I mean uh, you have to uh, put in the hours. Sometimes it gets extremely tough, but you have to put in the effort. Uh, you have to put in a face and uh, your, your own, uh, lack of a better word, I'd say you are your, your own cheerleader. Mm -hmm. Because you don't expect anyone to come in, you know, uh, clapping or hands, you know, saying, I know Felix is doing all this. Or but ideally, uh, it all boils down to you as an individual. Mm -hmm. You have to put in the effort. You have to put in uh, your all your mind into it. You have to put in your effort into it. You have to block your ears to in form of distraction. You own the dream. The yes. dream is yours. Uh, ideally, uh, very few people would understand what Felix is trying to do. But it's you who understand what you want to achieve. And ideally, some of the policies or some some of uh, you know the big entrepreneurs who uh, or the big innovators we've had in this world, the mm -hmm. likes of uh, the likes of um, uh, uh, Elon Musk, uh, the, li the likes of uh, you know um, Jeff Bezos, Jack Ma. Uh, these are dreams that no one saw coming. Themselves saw their dream, you know. They are the only people who knew what they wanted to mm. achieve. So as long as you see your dream, go for your dream, close your ears, focus on your dream, it's all yours. It's you to miss it. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, you say, I, I, I'm sure you've knocked, you knocked a lot of doors when you maybe you are sourcing for capital. Uh, at, at some point, you are yeah. doing sourcing out for printers. Yeah. And you are knocking doors, you're not giving up, and... The banks sometimes they ask for a lot of collaterals yeah. when starting a business. Yeah. How d how did you how did you make it and at what point did it come out like now this is my my break uh, yeah. this is my breakthrough. So um, as I told you, I go into business in campus, mm -hmm. and uh, all through campus life, uh, of, uh, having done one two supply businesses in there, I would have access to you know a few uh, you know, shillings in there. So uh, money was flowing, yes, but uh, at that time, uh, at the bank that supported supported me was uh, Jamie Boro Bank. Mm -hmm. At that time, they were having a tender hub that uh, they would call in uh, young investors uh, who are trying to venture into the what do you call it, uh <coughs> the tendering space. Mm -hmm. So what they would do is that uh, they would call in young guys, show them how to apply for tenders, then they would finance them. So I got. Uh, that opportunity to work with them and they financed me through the entire campus life of I doing the supply business. Mm -hmm. uh, when I identified a gap in the market, I tried to now move into trying to add value in the supply chain itself. So what I do is that uh, I wanted to guarantee someone who is in Rwanda mm -hmm. that you can place your order for product in Nairobi and mm -hmm. have it delivered in Rwanda without the hassle of customs, clearing and forwarding, mm -hmm. logistical work being taken care of. So I came to Nairobi with a brilliant idea. Uh, a few thousands to start. I uh, wanted to build a software. I didn't know that software development would take cost millions. But uh, you know, uh, with a few thousands, I thought you know, I have something to start with. Uh, came to Nairobi, uh, tried to build my first software, flopped badly. Second software, flopped badly. Uh, tried in about four more times didn't work, uh, got uh, my capital entirely d uh, drained. But uh, I had one last card mm -hmm. that I knew as much as I did not have money to set up a business, uh, I had Felix. Uh, and what I mean by I had Felix, I had my own. I, I, I knew I'd walk into offices and I'd always get my way through people. Mm -hmm. So what I do is that uh, I set a target and I made sure each and every day I knew one new person. Mm -hmm. So I'd walk into government offices, I'd walk to banks, just s seek to talk to the manager mm -hmm. and sell some of my dreams, some of these guys. Uh, I created an entire network of friends who are way, you know, older than me. Uh, and I think as of today, uh, still being a young entrepreneur, uh, the youngest friends I have are guys who are the age of 45 to 50. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'm asked uh, rhetorically that, you uh, you are a very young person sitting with grown up men, old men, you know, you're not able to fit in with people for, from your age. Mm -hmm. But uh, sitting with these older generation uh, taught me that I don't really have to make mistakes that they made. Mm -hmm. I can have a bit of a leeway to have uh, a kind of um, a lack of a better word, I'd call it 
Felix is in life. <laughs> All right, let's take a short break. And uh, as Felix has uh, said, uh, you are, they say your network is your network. So young entrepreneurs, just be persistent, do your research before you do your business and get the information that you want when you want to penetrate your market. So uh, let's talk a, take a break and we'll be back shortly. <laughs> RSA marketplace. So if I am a supplier and it's it's a one-stop shop for suppliers, mm. if I am a supplier and um, I'm shipping my goods, maybe I have a machine from from China and I want to bring it to to Kenya, and um, the transparency that the supplier needs and until my good reaches now the customer in the ground. Take us through what is what is the process? How is RSA Marketplace yeah. helping the supplier to know exactly where my good is, and where is it stopping, and what are the charges? What what is the cost implication, yeah. and mm. all that process? How is it? Okay, uh, as I said before, uh, our main aim is to guarantee uh, people who want to enter into this market mm -hmm. and people who also want to get out of this market to a different market that. Uh, one, uh, we can get their product there mm -hmm. at the right time uh, with no hassles, with no hassles along uh, you know, border points. And then deliver to their customers on the other end uh, without any form of uh, hindrances in business. Mm -hmm. uh, how we do it is uh, we target uh, manufacturers mm -hmm. who want to venture out of this space. You know, I look at uh, guys who manufacture paints in Haribanki, mm -hmm. guys who manufacture, uh, you know, uh, small time manufacturers around this country uh, they don't have a voice to sell their brands yeah. we all manufacture some of the products we manufacture with an aim of looking at the 40 million kenyans we have in this market but we don't manufacture products look at the one billion of one billion africans mm -hmm. there is in this continent so ideally how we do it is that uh, we onboard some of these small manufacturers mm -hmm. we try and link them depending on where their product is in deficit in the african continent a good example is um, there's an acute uh, shortage of um, food products in this country. Uh, we import a lot of rice. We import a lot of maize. So uh, for me, I know there is a market. Mm -hmm. of Through my company, we've identified a cement market in Tanzania. So what we do is that we link up the cement company in Kenya mm -hmm. to a customer who is in Tanzania. And how we do it, we receive the order from the customer who is in Tanzania process the order tr tr with the manufacturer who is locally uh, available here. Mm -hmm. We transport the goods all the way to Tanzania. Now, from Tanzania, what we do, we identify a product that is in surplus in Tanzania as in deficit in this country, mm -hmm. which is products like maize and rice. So we've already identified a market for the same same product locally mm -hmm. here. And we get an order from a client who needs rice locally. So uh, we get the rice through the same transport or the same courier or the same truck that mm -hmm. carried cement from here to Tanzania. The same trucks don't load this, uh, the rice from Tanzania mm -hmm. back to this country. And we're able to cut on the cost of transport by almost 30%. Uh, number two is consolidation. Uh, so some of the traders that we have in this country uh, or some of the small scale manufacturers may not be able to manufacture products and uh, fill up a 30 ton truck or fill up an entire 40-foot container. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we consolidate some of these orders. So what we do is that uh, we identify a market a market in a different region. Some of the orders that are placed, they might be in small quantities. So we can aggregate them into one consignment mm -hmm. and make deliveries to some of these clients. So yes. how do you source your, uh, your clients here in Kenya? Are they in your uh, the the RSA marketplace is there a place that we will log in and register your company mm -hmm. so that you can connect uh, the supplier to the producer in mm -hmm. Tanzania yeah. or how does 
the marketplace work? So what we have is that we've created a portal, mm -hmm. a portal that is, uh, I'd call it uh, uh, a private portal for uh, people in business. Mm -hmm. uh, private, what I mean is this. Uh, we vet all the suppliers we have on our portal. So people that we onboard on our portals, they are verified suppliers. You can view their documentations. You can view who they are, what their volumes, what, what the capacity of uh, their manufacturing, mm -hmm. their documentations, their licenses. We're trying to say that if each and every manufacturer on our database is a vetted, verified manufacturer. Each and every buyer on our platform is a vetted and verified buyer. Mm -hmm. Because our main market is a B2B market. So it's business to business. So today a business that is in the manufacturing space can also be a buyer on the same marketplace. Okay. A buyer can still be a supplier yes. on the same, same okay. uh, marketplace. Uh, for us, what we're trying to sell is uh, one, the convenience, the security, uh, the convenience of doing business mm -hmm. uh, in Africa through us. So is there a cost implication for that private registration? Yes, there's a cost implication, mm -hmm. but uh, it's more of a transaction fee that we charge. Mm -hmm. uh, it's segmented depending on the services you take from us, because we have logistics as a service, we have the marketplace as a service, and at the same time, uh, we also have warehousing as a service. Uh, we have warehouses spread across, across the country. We have a warehouse in uh, Kenya, uh, one in Shokimau. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a warehouse in uh, Tanzania, Tarime. Uh, we have a warehouse in uh, Uganda, Kampala. Mm -hmm. So these centers um, create uh, more of an aggregation center mm -hmm. or a consolidation center. So in this consolida consoli consolidation center, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, what we do there is that uh, we receive orders, make purchases on behalf of our clients, consolidate the orders in these warehouses, and make a one-off delivery mm -hmm. uh, to the client, depending on their needs, or customize what they require, depending on their needs. All right. Uh, uh, I think it's a good thing you've mentioned that the RSA marketplace is everybody, every supplier, Every buyer that is, is uh, registered there is vetted because, you know, most of the time we do business, but we don't know who we are doing business with. So yeah. we end up, people end up getting duped and they losing their money. So yeah. that's a good thing if uh, there is a vetting in the process. So uh, in, in your own uh, capacity or in your own words, so what are the emerging trends? the new normal mm -hmm. in uh, the supply chain and mm -hmm. logistics as compared before when things were normal before the COVID-19 came? So uh, one, uh, say I call it a massive uh, you know, change that has come into place or uh, we look at the African uh, free continental, no, African uh, continental, conti continental free trade areas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this is a big opportunity. Mm -hmm. Uh, a big opportunity that Africans have to wake up and look at. Mm -hmm. This is uh, an opportunity to get into international trade. At the same time, uh, it's an opportunity uh, for us as RSA, mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, uh, through um, uh, the AF, uh, SCFTA. SCFT mm -hmm. agreement, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you have actually told Africans you can freely trade among each other, yeah. but you haven't told them how. Mm -hmm. So RSA is here to answer the question, <laughs> how do we get into international trade? Uh, uh, and this is by moving the product from one point to another. Uh -huh. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, like how we do it in, uh, let me give you a case example. Uh -huh. How we do it in uh, Tanzania. So uh, we take cement to Tanzania. Now, the customer who is in Tanzania made payment, walked into a Tanzanian bank, and made payment through their own currency, uh -huh. made payment for the cement in Kenya. We procured the cement in Kenya for the client, mm -hmm. delivered the cement to Tanzania. Okay? Yes. The client who is in Kenya ordered for rice, walked into a Kenyan bank, made payment for the rice. Mm -hmm. Okay? That rice was bought in Tanzania mm -hmm. using the same money that was used as a uh, payment for the procurement of cement. Mm -hmm. So ideally what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, I move the product but not money out of the country. 
Okay, uh, very interesting. I wish we could have more time to discuss on this. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Felix, thank you again for coming. Yeah. And uh, for the young entrepreneurs outside there, kindly, kindly, uh, the steps that you've uh, been mentioned by Mr. Felix Chege. And there is a marketplace for you outside there. If you really need, if you are a supplier, if you are uh, doing business and you want your products to be in that marketplace for uh, uh, the RSA marketplace, please get in touch with us. You can call KNCCI through the contacts that have been given through and we'll connect you to Mr. Felix Chege. And thank you viewers for watching and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.